Hey guys, Franco here from my IT and cybersecurity journey. And at the request of a subscriber, we are going to be going over how I take my notes in Obsidian. So here on my screen, I have Obsidian pulled up. For those of you that don't know what Obsidian is, um, just to give a quick overview. Obsidian uh, can be installed on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, uh, iPhone and iPad, and Android. And it's the reason I was more attracted to it. I, I know a lot of you guys saw that I originally used Notion, but the reason why I ended up migrating to Obsidian was because when it comes to privacy of my own data, I like having and being the only person that holds my data. Um, that's when the security side of me comes out more. Uh, a big example of that, if you, if you know me personally, is this past weekend I set up uh, Vault Warden, which is an open source version of Bitwarden. And for those of you who don't know what Bitwarden is, it's a password manager. And I self-host it so that I'm not using Google's password manager, Apple's password manager, whoever. And I'll probably make a video on that uh, here in the next couple of days because I think when it comes to self-hosting, the main reason you should be doing it is to protect your data and so that it's not in the hands of no, no one else. And there's a lot of ways you can do that. Besides that, uh, when it comes down to Obsidian, how do I take notes? So let's start off with what is Obsidian. Obsidian, like I said, is a note-taking app. Um, I don't believe it's open source, but they do have communi uh, community plugins. Uh, plugins are basically just extensions which can extend the functionality of your Obsidian app depending on the user's needs. The way you would access that is down here. You could go down to community plugins. There's also core plugins, which is everything the app comes with. But there's community plugins. Uh, you would have to turn off restricted mode. You can browse plugins and you can add plugins. So there's, you know, you can edit and view Excaladraw and Obsidian. I mean, this is awesome for people who use Excaladraw. I might have to use it at some point because visualizing stuff is really important in technology. Uh, I only have Calendar. I'm probably going to uninstall this because I don't even use it. And then there's minimal theme settings. I love this because um, my Obsidian looks this way thanks to minimal theme. After you add a plugin, you're gonna get a community plugins here down at the bottom. And right, so all it does is it pretty much changes the way my Obsidian looks. That's all that does. Uh, and it can be customized, even the font, typography, features, color scheme, a lot of things. So that's the only plugins I have. That's all you need to know about that. Now, for WGU specifically, the way I have organized my notes is I create a folder for the class. So the way you would create a folder is down here, new folder. And let's just say this is class one. So typically for Zybooks, right? If any of you have used Zybooks at WGU, there's images. Right, there's vocabulary, right? So a word in Zybooks will be bolded, right? That you know, and it'll have the um, definition of that word. And then there's the notes of what you specifically need to know to pass your class. So I don't take notes over everything. I take notes over the things that are not common sense and I'm most likely gonna be quizzed on based off of the exam objectives. So we go down here. The best class that is the best example of the way I organize things is scripting and programming foundation. I have the folder for the class itself with the class code. And then I have three subfolders stored inside of scripting and programming foundations. So I have the images folder, the notes folder, and the vocab folder. And the way you would do this is, well, after you create your class folder, which you just did here, we would create class one subfolder. And after we create this subfolder, oops, can't spell today. After we create this subfolder, we can go ahead 
put it inside of the class one folder, and it'll show up as a subfolder. Then when you create a note, which is up here, new note, let's just call this note one. I can go ahead and store it in my subfolder, or if I wanted to, the main folder. And it would show up here. So in scripting and programming, why do I have an image and a vocab? Well, images are exactly that. I take screenshots of the course content, specifically when I don't feel like writing something down or I need an example uh, that references what the note that I took was about. So for example, here in 1.1 programming general, right? I wrote down here what a variable is and how programs use it, but I wanted an example. So that's what I did. There was an example problem, went ahead, and I copied and pasted it into my note. So the reason you, I made an images folder is because when you copy and paste an image or upload an image into Obsidian, it adds it down here. And if I didn't put them in a folder, it would just keep going That You would see a bunch of image files here. The way this looks, they would all be disorganized down here. So for the class that they were used in, I just go ahead, create an images subfolder, and I place them in there. And as you can see, I did that as well for this class and the other classes. So for the notes themselves, Obsidian is an interesting tool because it uses something called links. And what links let you do, right, there's internal links. Basically what a link lets you do, right, you surround a word with um, square brackets. I use the double square brackets method instead of the markdown method. So you can link a heading in the note you can link a block in a note, uh, and that just means a word or a paragraph or whatever. And it lets you kind of link notes together. And the way I use it is, I like to create a link out of the words um, in Zybooks that are defined, the words that are bolded in Zybooks that have a definition tied to them, I go ahead and I create a link out of that word. And inside of the link, I put the definition of the word, right? And I could also add tags if I wanted. I don't really use them because I, I haven't found any use for them yet. You could add tags uh, and you could search by tags. I have not used that functionality much though. But the way I use it, right? So I used input here. And it's linking 1.1 programming general. Obsidian has this graph view that lets you see where things are linked. You can also do it through the search function, but um, I just want to use a visual representation of links. So if I'm correct, I think it's somewhere here. I know it's it's not far from here. It has to be where 1.1 is. There we go. So 1.1 program in general, this note has all this stuff tied to it. And here we see our input. Input is found in 1.1 program in general, 1.2 program in basics, section, and 6.4. So that is what a link is doing. Wherever you use that link, once you, once you create a link for a term, you can then use that link in other notes to link them together so that in your brain, the connections are made on how all these things tie in together, and it helps with recall. Now, for most of you that don't know what recall is, recall is your ability to recall information, especially when it comes to taking an exam at WGU, because WGU exams are very definition heavy. And a lot of the times, you are just recalling definitions of terms you have learned. So. So that's why I take notes this way is because I struggle with long-term long-term retention of information. Uh, Short-term, right, I can go through the notes of a class and I can take an exam, but I'll forget all that crap the next day, man. After I take that exam, my mind goes blank. I do this so that I make sure that that doesn't happen. Because I believe when, if you're pursuing a career in computer science or in technology in general, 
foundational skills will take you so much further than high level skills. High level skills will get you a job, but foundational skills will help you achieve those high level skills. And that's my personal opinion. So we go here, right? I can then see where input is linked. So I can then go to 1.2 programming basics and see input is I'm a little blind. So see, I use input here for input statements. Oh, what's a statement? Statements carry out an action and execute one at a time. Oh, okay. So then, you know, you, you kind of, oh, an input statement. So you can tie in terms together. So how do you create a link? Well, let's say here in my note one, I wanted to create a link called Python. There's already one there for me. So let me try a different one. So let's say I wanted to do JavaScript. What is JavaScript, okay? So I surround the term by double brackets, hit space, double click it, and just a very brief overview of JavaScript is a scripting language. Okay, so then a link has been created for JavaScript. Let's say I go down here to, as you can see, it popped up here. That's where you would go and drag it into the vocab folder. I'm not going to do it because I'm going to delete it, but that was here because this link for JavaScript is already created when we do this if you notice as we type it it finds it for us we can just then hit enter and here on the bottom it also tells you type pound to link a heading type um, the up arrow to link blocks and type pipe to change the slate text so I could just write JavaScript here, and now those two notes that I wrote down the JavaScript are linked together, right? And as you can see, the definition is there. Um, and then if we go over to the graph view, and there's another, there's other ways you could do this. This is just the way I do it, but it should be somewhere here. I'm probably going to struggle, struggle to find it. So that's one thing about the graph view. It, makes, it doesn't make it easy, but it, JavaScript is somewhere here and you get the idea, right? It would look like one of these, right? So it would link the two notes together and you can go back and forth and kind of um, look at those two notes. So as you're doing your classes at WGU, a lot of these computer science terms are going to be reused over and over and over and over and over. So you can go back and see the notes that are linked together through the link you created. And that will help you kind of recall information and also tie information together so that it sticks with you long-term. And what I suggest you do, because I can't go into detail for everything that Obsidian does. I can, but I don't want to become an Obsidian teacher, is I suggest, like everything else, to read the documentation. Reading the documentation will teach you everything you want to know if you want to become an Obsidian Pro. Now, my only tip to you is do not overcomplicate note taking. Note taking should feel easy. It should be like flowing water, right? Going down a river. Um, another thing I have found Obsidian help me with is because of the way I inter because I have to be more interactive with the notes that I'm taking by creating links and such and such. In a sense, it has kind of helped with getting into that flow state quicker so that I can take notes. And, you know, like I, I felt like taking notes, you know, is easier and it has helped me focus for longer study sessions. So before I could only sit down for about 30 minutes at a time, um, especially if I'm like souped up on coffee, it's like, oh, you know, it kind of helps, it breaks focus, but, you know, I've kind of developed a routine and, you know, I suggest you guys download this. So I've developed a routine and I feel like it's just a, it, the way the human brain works is so interesting. Download this app called, let me see if I can make it bigger. Download this, Yil Pumta. I think it's an Indian app. So it's a, it's, it's a study tracking app 
which lets me track my studying. And, you know, I sit down at my desk and I've started turning this on when I want to get into deep study work. And I found that the more I do it, the easier it is for me to come here, turn this on. And instead of sitting here and watching Mr. Beast videos, <laughs> I'm here studying and, you know, programming. Um, so, yeah, as you can see here, I've been going through this freaking thick baby. Look at this crap. So, yeah, that's how I take notes in Obsidian at the request of our, uh, one of my subscribers. If you guys want to see more videos, please hit the like and subscribe. Uh, I love making content for you guys. I really am trying to improve the quality of the content I'm making. Um, that's it for now. So just a quick recap. Obsidian, note-taking app, links, go read the documentation. Cannot emphasize that anymore. Go read the documentation. Uh, I think the next video is probably going to be a video over how I set up Vault Warden because I think self-hosting is pretty easy. And with the right guidance, anyone can do it. It's not hard. Anyone can do it. All that it'll cost you is getting like an old computer, which, you know, depending on your price range, it could be as cheap as you want or as expensive as you want. And besides that, the only other thing you probably need to set up is a domain to show you what I'm going to, uh, how I set this up. You'd have to buy your own domain, uh, and that's relatively inexpensive. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking through and watching. I know this one was kind of long. We're almost at 17 minutes. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one, and happy holidays. Bye.